Hey everybody, my name is Jerrica Goodgame, KI5HTA, and we know a lot of folks have difficulties when it comes to the process of license renewal, so today we want to walk you through that. This is Maria Soma, AB1FM. I'm manager of the ARRLVEC department. My license is up for renewal, and I thought it would be a great way to show members how to step through the license renewal process, so I'm going to take you through that. Before you even renew your license, if you've not set up a CORS username account, you must do that ahead of time to make the process easier for yourself. So we're going to first show you the FCC CORS registration system. I've already set up a username account for myself and associated my FRN to the account, but we're going to log in just to see what it looks like. Now we're going to log into the license manager system to start the renewal process. Be patient with the FCC system as they've got added security on it, so it may take a little longer than normal to get logged in. If your license is in the 90-day renewal period, there'll be a box in the center of the screen that says this license is el eligible for renewal. Click on begin the renewal process and the FCC system will step you through. This is the license I would like to renew. I'll hit continue. Amateurs are not exempt from any of the fees, so that is correct. They both should be no. Hit continue again. Make sure your address and email address and everything looks good. If it does, hit continue. Otherwise, you could change it here. Every amateur has to answer the basic qualification question. Go ahead and enter the appropriate response here. Hit continue. This is the summary page. If, again, everything looks good, click continue to certify. These are just general certification statements. Um, just read through them quickly and then type below to certify these. Most amateurs are not going to have a title. That's for other wireless services. Click Submit Application. And then this is where we're going to go through the payment process. If you click this Continue to Cores for Payment Completion, this will take you back to the Cores registration system where you've created the new Cores account. You'll log back in. Click on Manage Existing FRNs. FRN Financial, View or Make Payments. Now, if you've correctly associated your FRN to your new CORS account, the payment information will be here. So now I'm going to make the payment. The FCC actually gives you a number of ways to pay. Most people are going to pay online using a credit card. That's the easiest way. We're going to select the FRN that we're making the payment for and then we're gonna click, click Continue. Enter all your credit card information here. After you enter your credit card information, you'll hit Continue. Then you'll certify the information and hit Continue again, and then a payment confirmation will come up. Either print or download the information to your computer so you have it on record, and that should be the end of the process. You'll log out, and within 12 to 24 hours, the FCC will process the payment. You'll get an email with a link to your officially renewed license. Hey y'all, this is Josh. He's an expert here at the AWRL VEC. He helps people deal with a lot of problems and pitfalls they run into when renewing their license. So Josh, you know, there's a lot of pitfalls when you renew your license. What are some of the ones you deal with the most? Um, probably some of the most that I deal with is after you create the CORS account, um, a lot of folks get stuck up at associating the FRN to your account. So um, in order to do that, um, you will need your FRN number and you will also need the password for your FRN number. Most folks either have never created an FRN password, the FCC might have done it for them, or they created it a very long time ago so they don't remember the password. So you'll have to click on where it says uh, reset FRN password. Um, they'll then ask for your FRN number again, you just provide that. Um, and if you set this up many years ago, they will ask for what's called a personal security question. So this was done when they originally got the FRN. It could be anything like, you know, what's your mother's maiden name? What's the name of your pet? Something like that. Um, if that option does appear, um, that's good. You can just simply type in the answer in the box and you can bypass having to put in the password altogether. Um, but if you never created um, a personal security question, you, you won't see that option at all. So um, you'll have to click down below where it says uh, forgot FRN password. 
and once again they'll ask for your uh, FRN number again. So once you get to that page, um, you're going to have to enter your first name, your last name, your zip code, and your social security number. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't put any dashes in the social security number, just to make it easier. Um, sometimes it causes issues. Um, the zip code is where a lot of folks get stuck at because um, you have to enter the zip code that was originally entered in with your FRN number. So if you recently moved, um, you don't want to put your new zip code in because that's not what was originally entered when you got your FRN. So um, you can always look it up on the FCC database if you search up your FRN. It'll pull up you know, the zip code when it was created and then you want to make sure you use that correct zip code when you enter it in for the uh, password reset. Um, that's where a lot of folks get stuck at, but you want to make sure that you don't try more than twice. If you do try more than twice, it can lock you out of your account. Um, if that does happen to you, you will have to contact the FCC um, because at that point, you know, there's nothing you can do. Um, calling the ARRL, we won't be able to assist you. You'll have to contact the FCC and they can unlock your account for you. You know, it's a great benefit for ARRL members that the VEC is willing to walk them through this process. Can you talk a little more about that, maybe? Sure. Um, so, if you are a member of the ARRL, it is a benefit, you know. Um, we do offer the service of submitting the application free of charge. So, you can simply give us a call or shoot us an email. Um, we can assist you that way. Um, we would need an application filled out in order to submit the application. Um, our renewal form is called a 605 quick form that you would have to fill out. You can always send that to us by email or you can mail it out to us and we'll take care of that for you and submit the application. Um, if you're not a member, we can still assist you. Um, we do have a $15 fee for processing applications. Um, simply, you know, give us a call. We can take the credit card information over the phone or you can fill out the 605 quick form and then mail it out to us um, with a $15 check and then we can process the application at that point. Um, for our members, we can offer further service. Um, a lot of folks have difficulty you know, navigating the FCC's website, making the payment. Um, we can't do the whole thing for you, but we can assist to where we can, um, helping you by creating the account, navigating the FCC's website, and then essentially getting to the final point in making the payments. I hope that's been of help to you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the ARL VEC department.